I strongly believe that you are going to give this video a thumbs up because of the amazing traps that I'm about to show you that will help you confuse your opponents in the early stage of the game and probably force them to resign fast. So without wasting much of your time, again in today's video we are talking about the weak F7 pawn. Continuing from the last video on how you can be sacrificing your minor pieces on the weak f7 square and force your opponents to resign. Many people seemed to like this video because it gained over 300,000 views in a space of four months. So you can find the link to this video in the card above. Now in today's video, I'm gonna show you something more extraordinary on how you can take advantage of the weak f7 pawn, which is only defended by the king. And that's how weak it is. So trap number one, against the Karokan defense. So here you play pawn to e4, then black responds with pawn to c6. Then instead of going pawn to d4, which is by far the most common move, I suggest you play the two knights variation. You go knight c3, they'll play pawn to d5, a typical plan in the Karokan defense, and then you go knight f3. Now see what we did here? We just simply developed our two knights first before developing any other minor pieces following the opening principles. And right here, you're going to see most of your opponents taking on e4, after which you should take back on e4 with your knight. They'll go bishop f5, one of the most played moves. The idea is just to move their light squared bishop outside the pawn chain after pawn to e6. So here you just go knight g3, attacking the bishop once more. They always go bishop g6. Now you start pushing your pawn, go to h4, intending to go h5 next. They'll play h6, creating a small room for the light squared bishop. You go knight e5. Now that's the key move you need to remember. And here they'll play bishop h7 as planned. Now you go queen h5, intending to checkmate on f7. Again, when you look into the Leeches database, Pawn to g6, stopping the upcoming checkmate is by far the most played move. You know what? You simply ignore this threat and go bishop c4. The idea is that if they take your queen, you can simply checkmate on f7 and go home. And so you're not going to see them blundering like that. Instead of taking, they are going to play something like pawn to e6. Now your queen is under attack for sure. I suggest you go queen e2 and expect black to blunder on the next move. Let me turn on the leeches database to show you what the sons of Solomon and Jacob play in this position. Well, as you can see, bishop g7 is by far the top played move. And the second most played move is knight to f6, which turn out to be big blunders, by the way. E.g. after bishop g7, you can simply surprise your opponents by sacrificing your knight on f7, posing a double threat on your opponent's queen and the rook on h8. Again, king takes f7 is the most played move, after which you finally take on e6 with check and there's a mate coming in one. Okay, now instead of bishop g7, they may also try to play knight to f6. All this will lead to a similar kind of death. Again, knight takes f7, double attacking two of black's pieces. They'll take the knight, and then you go queen takes e6 once again. It doesn't even matter where the king goes cause it's checkmate. So that's one little trap to master. And trust me, by wanting to play this trap, you will be able to learn how to play the two knights attack against the Karokan defense. Let's move on to the next trap. Trap number two against the Scandinavian baby. This will be a normal Scandinavian after pawn to e4. Black plays d5. And now you don't play knight to f3 here, hoping to enter into the tennis on gambit. You just simply play the main move. E takes d5. And most of the times they are going to take on d5 with their queen. After which you develop your other knight with tempo, attacking the queen. Now there are two popular moves here. The top played move by far is queen back to d8. According to the Leeches database, Queen f5 is also a possibility, but let's look at what most people play. Queen d8. Now here you play Knight f3. Again, just like in the previous trap, see how we have developed our knights first before developing any other pieces. It is always more flexible to start with the knights. And you will see, in this position, Bishop f5 is the top engine move, which we want to see by the way. Sometimes they can delay bishop a5 and instead play something like knight to f6 or bishop g4. Well, I'm still going to show you what to do against those moves. But after bishop a5, just go bishop c4 in this position. So that's secret number one. 
Now black will play pawn to e6 since the bishop is outside the pawn chain. Now wait a second. In this position pawn to d4 is very much playable. But I want you to play this sneaky move knight e5. Oh you are going to win a lot of games with this move. As your opponents are not really going to be sure the idea behind this move. And once again as you can see the Lich's database. Knight to f6 is by far the top played move. Let's cover that. You see them playing knight f6. Now you can go queen f3. With queen f3, we are simply attacking the pawn on b7. And that's why you're going to see them playing pawn to c6. And oops, it wasn't about the b7 pawn. It was about the f7 pawn once again. Forking the queen on d8 and the rook on h8. So king takes f7 is by far the most played move. After which, you now take the bishop. Black can't take your queen because the pawn is pinned to the king by our bishop. So they are going to play queen e7 guarding this pawn. Now you can go knight e4. The idea is just to go knight g4 check next and win this pawn right here. So they'll play something like pawn to h6 stopping knight g4. Now we change our plan. We go knight c5 with the same idea. And because of this they're going to try something like queen takes c5 in an effort to exchange queens. But there is a mate in 6 right here. After queen takes c6 check. King g6 only move, bishop d3 check, if king g5 we have pawn to h4 check, they'll go king h5, again you go queen h3 check, king g5 only move, or pawn to f4 check, king takes only move, then queen g3 checkmate. Okay, let's go back. Alright, so after we play this sneaky move knight to e5, instead of knight f6, black may also play something like bishop d6. Well here we'll just have a normal game, we can just simply go queen e2, defending our knight, black doesn't have to give up his bishop pair so early. Alright, back to this position, still in the Scandinavian defense, after pawn to e4 d5, I said you just simply take the pawn. If queen takes, you attack the queen knight c3 and then after the most played move queen d8 you go knight f3. Now instead of bishop f5, your opponents may play knight to f6 which happens to be the top played move in this position. Now just simply develop your large squared bishop to c4, waiting for bishop f5 or even bishop g4 once again. Let's say if bishop g4, you know what? This time it is even worse because you can simply shock your opponents once again by yep sacrificing on f7 just like in the previous line if king takes f7 you now go knight e5 check and you are assured of winning back your piece black just lost his rights to castle and we have better plans as highlighted pawn to d4 we'll play bishop e3 later on queen f3 will castle long and life will go on all right now see after queen takes d5 and knight c3 attacking the queen instead of queen d8 black may also play queen a5 i'm not gonna cover this line because i covered it already in the video that has popped up in the card above so you can go and watch that video after you finish watching this one all right let's go to the next trap trap number three in the scorch gambit so you go pawn to e4 they play pawn to e5 knight f3 knight c6 all standard stuff now you can go pawn to d4 this is called the scotch game. Let them take the pawn and now you don't take back right away. You simply go bishop c4 eyeing the weak f7 pawn once again. Now right here you may check the leeches database. Knight to f6 is again the top played move. Now wait a second. The main line here is to play pawn to e5 which is the top played move. But we don't want to play that because we also have an option to take back our pawn on d4 and trust me this is gonna confuse a lot of your lower rated opponents. They'll take the free pawn on e4 and once again ladies and gentlemen bishop takes f7 check. That's a sacrifice black has to take after which we play queen h5 they'll play pawn to g6. So far we have made black to lose his rights to castle. And we have also managed to somehow weaken his king side. So we go queen d5 check intending to win back our knight on d4. E.g. if king e8 will simply take this knight. And if king g7 which is the top played move. We don't have to take on e4 right away. Because black can play bishop b4 check. And rook e8 will simply come afterwards. Pinning our queen to the king. Possibly of course. So we first of all need to play knight takes c6. Instead of taking with their d pawn, you are going to see them taking with their b pawn. And that's when we are supposed to take the knight 
And it turns out that we are the ones who have remained with the beta pawn structure for an easy end game. Now let's go back a little bit. You can also start this trap in the Italian style. Let me show you. Starting with a move pawn to e4, let's say they play pawn to e5, knight f3, knight c6. Instead of playing pawn to d4 right away, you simply go bishop c4, which is the Italian game. And the second most played move is knight to f6 by far. That's when you can play pawn to d4. This is called the Italian game two knights defense open variation. If e takes d4, now the game transposes back into the scotch gambit which I just showed you. And it was here where I said we don't want to play pawn to e5, which is the main line and very playable by the way. Instead, we want to take the pawn on d4 so that if black takes, we sacrifice on f7 with our bishop. And so that's just a transposition to remember. But instead of e takes d4, you may also see your opponents taking with their knight. This is even worse. Because now you can simply sacrifice on f7 right away. And if king takes f7, you take the pawn on e5 with check. And let's say king e8, now you can take back with the knight. What have you done? You just made black lose his rights to castle once again. Hence, slowing his development of pieces. And that's the whole idea with these sacrifices, you guys. They'll play queen e7. Now with queen e7, the only thing you need to know is that they are not attacking your knight on e5. They are indirectly attacking your pawn on e4 together with the knight. And so the move that should always come into your mind is knight d2 indirectly defending this pawn on e4. So that if d6 comes, you now play knight e f3. And it turns out that your pawn is well defended. Next, you castle short and start developing other pieces. So these are just some little traps to remember. Let's move on to the next trap. Trap number four, against the Karakan defense. Now in the fantasy variation. So we begin with pawn to e4, they play c6. Now, this time, instead of playing the two knights attack against the Karakan, we simply go pawn to d4, and then they play d5. The fantasy variation is where we play pawn to f3 on move number three. With pawn to f3, we leave an option of maintaining our two pawns on the center, and that happens after d takes e4, well, we take back with our F pawn. So we still have our two center pawns. This is also an opening to consider playing in classical games. E5 is the main move. The idea is that if we take, they'll simply take our queen and make us lose our right to castle. So we just simply play knight F3, double attacking the pawn on E5. What do most people do? They go bishop G4, pinning this knight to our queen on D1. And this is when we play bishop C4 once again. And I'm sure you already know what we are looking for. Now, let me tell you something here. Knight d7 is the main move, which guards this e5 pawn. But I can assure you to say it's not what you're going to see most of your opponents playing. They are used to playing moves such as bishop e7 and knight f6. For example, knight to f6 and that fails due to bishop takes f7 check once again. That's a sacrifice. After king takes f7, we simply take on e5 with check. And after something like king g8, that's when we take back our piece. Knight takes e4, we just simply cast a shot and from here we'll have a very good game. Let's go back a little bit. Now back to this Karakan position where we play pawn to f3 after d5. Let's say d takes e4, f takes e4, then black plays e5, we go knight f3. Instead of bishop g4, trust me, you are also going to see e takes d4 by black. Again, you just simply develop your bishop. That's the key move. If bishop g4, this is even worse. Because now we can directly sacrifice on f7 once again. And if king takes f7, again we go knight e5. Let's say king e6, we just take the bishop with check. Black thinks it's going to be a piece up and maybe hold on to the position after king takes e5. But the game is almost over because of bishop f4 check. If king f6, the simplest will be to win black's queen on d8 with the move queen h4 check. But if king takes e4, well, we just got knight d2 check. Then black will play king d5 only move. And that's when we met on f5. All right, so this was in the fantasy variation. Let's move on to the next trap. Anyways, let's look at the last one, which is more advanced. We got pawn to e4. They play c5, the Sicilian defense. And then we go knight f3. 
and then they play pawn to d6. This may lead to the Najo variation. We still go pawn to d4, pawn takes, knight takes, knight f6 attacking our pawn. And so we first of all play this little trick, bishop c4 giving up our e pawn. I mean, if knight takes were going to suck on f7 once again, I covered this trick in the video that has popped up in the card above. So feel free to check that as well after finishing to watch this video. So they'll play pawn to a6, which is still the modern variation. After knight c3, now this is the Najof variation, okay? But the move that should always be in your mind is knight to c6. If you see this move, I suggest you take that knight. You're going to see them taking with their b pawn. And that's when you push the pawn to e5. Now, wait a second. The best black can do here is to simply go back to d7, which appears to be a dubious move that can only be played by engines. For example, the top played move here according to Stockfish is knight g4 by black. But here we can simply go pawn to e6, cutting the communication between the bishop and the knight. So we can freely take the knight as you can see. And you are going to see black playing knight e5 to save his knight. Also attacking our bishop on c4. But hey, we don't care. We just go on and take on f7 once again. And if knight takes f7, we simply take with our bishop, making black to lose his right to castle. And not only that, we play the move queen f3 check targeting two squares at the same time so that's what happens if black decides to play knight g4 after we play pawn to e5 the second most played move in this position is d takes e5 which is a blunder because we have bishop takes f7 check and the only move here is king takes f7 after which we take the free queen on d8 and black has to resign Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Keep on communicating back. I need to learn of your existence. And I also need to know if at all you enjoy watching my videos. You can do that by hitting the like button, subscribe to my channel. And if you want to take your chess seriously beyond opening traps and tricks, you can check out the link for my website in the description down below where you can purchase all my courses at very affordable prices. All right. Thank you for watching my video.